Weight gain and menopause explained. Can you lose it? Can you prevent it? Is it inevitable? Or are there things that we can do to help prevent this weight gain that is very, very common in women going through menopause? Yes, there is. And that's what I'm going to talk about all in this video today. Of course, I'm not going to talk from a place of experience as I haven't yet gone through this change, only 39 over here, but I have worked with many, many women over the past 15 years in my career who are going through this change and help them decrease the amount of weight gain they're experiencing and lose that weight for good. And I want to help you do the same thing. So make sure you watch this video all the way to the end. And I'm going to go over four common causes of weight gain during menopause or premenopause and three things that you can do to help prevent or lose a menopause weight gain. I'm going to get right into the good stuff, but of course, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you get a notification when I release a new video every single week. My name is Michelle Roots, kinesiologist, personal trainer, nutrition coach, and fitness and fat loss motivation specialist, and mother of two beautiful baby boys. This channel is all about helping you on your fitness and fat loss journey to become the best version of yourself without all the diets and crazy workout regimens that you see all over the internet. And of course, if you find this video helpful, make sure you give it a like, leave me a comment below with any questions and feel free to share it with any friends and family that you think might benefit from this information as well. Okay, let's get right into it. This video comes very highly recommended from many of you, my subscribers. A lot of you asked for this, so here it is. I'm providing you all the information you need to know and I really hope this is helpful. Weight gain during menopause, why does it happen? Research has shown that the average woman gains one to two pounds per year in their 50s and 60s. And it commonly tends to subside right in the abdominal and belly area. But why does this happen and why is it such a common occurrence for women across the world? So what are the four common causes for weight gain in women going through menopause or even pre-menopause? Okay, common cause number one, your hormones. So a lot of times there's a lot of hormonal changes going on during perimenopause and menopause. Most importantly, a decrease in estrogen. As your estrogen levels are decreasing and decreasing, your metabolism will be slowed down, your hunger cues will be affected, so you will have an increased appetite, of course, so you'll be eating more, metabolism will be going down, that will lead to weight gain. And unfortunately, due to these hormonal changes, that weight gain often settles in the midsection. One reason number two, aging. So in general, both men and women as they age begin to lose their muscle mass at a faster rate. So if you've watched any of the other videos on my channel, you know how important muscle mass is to affect your basal metabolic rate. So how many calories your body is burning on a regular basis. So especially women who are aging after your thirties, you begin to lose your muscle mass at a faster rate. And of course, going into menopause because of all these hormonal changes, this rate increases significantly. So less muscle mass means your body's metabolism just naturally slows down. So you could actually be eating the exact same amount of calories you did five, 10 years ago, but now your metabolism is just a little bit slower. So you won't be burning as many calories throughout the day, which of course will lead to weight gain. Common reason number three, sleep problems. So again, I talk a lot on this channel just to the average human being, how important sleep is in your journey to not only lose weight, build lean muscles. So especially in menopause, one of the common causes, hot flashes, anxiety, waking up in the middle of the night for no reason. I have heard this from many women, again, not speaking from experience. And this lack of sleep will lead to hormonal imbalances, increased cortisol in the body, in turn cause weight gain and most likely belly fat. I talk all about that in this video right here. I'm talking about belly fat and cortisol. I'll link that video in the description below if you want to know more about all of these hormones and how they affect how your body stores fat. And the fourth common reason for weight gain during menopause is a lifestyle change. So often when we're young, we really want to work out hard and we want to get the abs and the bikini body and all of these things. And we want to feel strong and we want to get gains in the gym. And maybe as women start to age, not every woman, trust me, I train a lot of women going through menopause and one of them specifically can do 10 unassisted chin-ups and she is goals. So again, not everybody, but it's very, very common that as women age or as any human age, they're less likely to hit the gym as hard or be as active in their everyday life and be as conscious in moving their body. So it could be a combination of all these four things, but definitely lifestyle and not moving as much, not exercising as enough could cause weight gain. So there you go, guys. There are four common causes as to why women commonly experience weight gain during menopause or perimenopause. So remember, everybody is different. Not everybody is going to experience this and it's not inevitable for every single female, 
But if you are experiencing some unexplained weight gain in your midsection or anywhere in your body and you're not sure what you've done wrong or what's happening, these are four things you might wanna take a look at and maybe talk to your doctor and see if there's a few things you can help improve in order to prevent or lose any of the weight that you have gained. But now I'm gonna talk about three things you can do to help prevent this weight gain or if you have been experiencing some weight gain, how to help lose it or decrease how much weight you have gained in order to not only take care of your own health, especially when it comes to increased belly fat or visceral fat, which is the belly fat that sits around your organs that you can't see. It's not the subcutaneous fat that we can grab. It's the fat inside around all of your organs. So again, anything we can do to help either prevent it or just to help you feel better about yourself through this stage of life. So tip number one, right out the gate, I'm starting with exercise. Of course, I am a personal trainer and kinesiologist and I have worked with many women through this stage of life and they have reported back to me 99% of the time of increasing their movement, becoming more aware of their movement and exercise throughout the day and throughout the week and performing strength training has helped not only reduce some of the symptoms of menopause, like hot flashes or changes in mood or sleep issues. We've also seen a decrease in that weight gain and building some muscle and a decrease in belly fat and overall body fat percentage. So exercise, what do I mean by that? So first of all, you should be talking to your doctor before starting any type of exercise or strength training routine or regimen to make sure you are good to go. Well, there's two things we should be doing, daily movement and strength training. So if you've watched any of the other videos on my channel, you know how much I love strength training and how important it is, but we'll talk about cardiovascular training first. So literally just movement, something that is going to get your heart rate up. So if you are someone who doesn't like going to the gym, going out for a walk, getting about 5K, 6K, 7K steps a day, more the better, and building yourself up that way. So being more conscious of your daily movement, most importantly is finding something that you enjoy doing. If you like cycling, get yourself on a bike, grab a bunch of friends and go for a bike ride. If you like swimming, go to the pool and swim. So any type of cardiovascular activity that is easier on your joints, is comfortable and you truly enjoy it and it feels good, that is what's most important. Try and get two or three sessions of 30 to 40 minutes a week of moderate intensity cardio. So you are getting your heart rate up. So one, that is great for heart health. Two, it's just great for extra calorie burn and to help prevent weight gain or of course, increase weight loss. And next, strength training. So this could be body weight strength training, resistance bands, dumbbells, barbells, machines, whatever you feel comfortable with. Again, if you have never strength trained before, I highly recommend hiring a coach to make sure you're performing things with proper form to get the most out of your exercises. So why strength training? One, we want to build more lean muscle or prevent that sarcopenia, which is loss of lean muscle just because we are getting older. So if you continue to strength train through this phase of life, you are either going to prevent the amount of muscle you lose, but also probably and most likely build some lean muscle so you can feel strong. It is going to help prevent the likelihood of osteoporosis. So again, unfortunately, women during menopause are at a higher risk of experiencing osteoporosis. So a decrease in the strength of your bones, performing weight bearing exercises and strength training will help increase the strength of your bones as well. So of course, decrease the risk of osteoporosis. And number three, be able to move through life just feeling a bit better. So improving your core strength, building some muscles so you can carry your groceries, you can pick up your grandkids, you can chase after your grandkids. Again, this will lead to more movement throughout your day and just functioning better in life, which is what you want and prevent that weight gain. Okay, and tip number three, sleep. I know a lot of you are laughing right now and trust me, I've heard it all. Again, not speaking from experience, but I see a lot of clients on a weekly basis who complain to me consistently about how they weren't able to sleep and they don't know why and yada, yada, yada. But if there's anything that you can do to help prioritize your sleep, so whether it's going to bed at the same time every night, whether it's a digital detox at least one to two hours before bed, phones away, screens away, reading a book to help you feel tired or talking to your doctor to see if there's any kind of supplementation you can take that will help you sleep. Because in the end, sleep is so important, not only to function in life, keep your metabolism going, manage your hormone levels, prevent that spike in cortisol. And often just everybody in general, I know for myself, when I haven't slept, I find my sugar cravings are through the roof because when you are lacking sleep, 
you are seeking other things to give you energy. So if you're not getting sleep, often your body will start seeking that energy from other things and you will start craving sugar to help try and give you that energy boost. So again, I understand that a lot of times sleep is not an option. I have been a new mom twice to newborns. I completely understand sometimes sleep is just out of your control and it's not an option. So do your best to try and see where you can make some changes in your sleep cycle, what time you're going to bed, maybe trying to go to bed earlier or getting up earlier or not taking a nap in the middle of the afternoon so that you are tired when it comes to nighttime. See if there's anything you can do to help make that sleep situation just a little bit better. And I promise you it will go a long way. And tip number four, you might want to take a look at your overall nutrition. So as we mentioned earlier, your metabolism has probably gone down and your hunger cues. So most likely you are burning less calories throughout the day. So your basal metabolic rate. So how many calories you burn if you literally just laid in bed all day. I talk all about basal metabolic rate in this video right here. If you want to know more, I'll link that in the description below. So I'm not saying you should be going on a low calorie, 1200 calorie starvation diet. Trust me, please do not do that. I talk all about that in this video here as well. Please go check that out. If you are currently eating 1200 or less calories a day, you'll find out why that's not a good idea. So of course, in the end, weight loss equals calories in versus calories out, but looking at the quality of your calories. So the micronutrients and macronutrients of the foods you're eating, even just becoming more aware of what you're eating. I'm not saying you have to track your calories every day. If you're not someone who really wants to do that, just trying to make healthier choices, decrease your sugar intake, decrease um, alcohol intake. I'm not saying you have to cut it out completely, maybe just not a glass of wine every single night, maybe keep it to the weekends or special occasions. Of course, these hidden calories can quickly add up. So trying to eat more whole foods, less processed foods, more foods that are really nutrient dense, proteins, carbs, good fats, talk all about micronutrients and macronutrients in this video right here. Again, I'll link that below for you too. So this is just something that you might want to become more aware of what you are eating in order to support gaining muscle, maintaining whatever muscle you do have immune support, and of course, overall health. Okay guys. So there you go. I tried to keep it quick and to the point. If you are someone who is heading into menopause or you're going through menopause and you're experiencing weight gain and you're not sure why and you want to either prevent it or try and lose some of the weight you gain during this phase of life. I really hope these tips helped you out. And again, let me know in the comments below or leave any of your questions below and I'm happy to help. And if you are wanting to get into movement or strength training, I've got a free four week lifestyle shift and workout plan, including all the workout videos already on my channel here all broken down into a four week calendar to follow. I'll link that in the description below. I've also created an eight week beginner friendly training program for the gym that follows progressive overload and teaches you how to strength train safely and effectively in two four week phases. I've got a three day and a four day split. Again, I'll link that in the description below as well. If you want to start building some muscle and create a body recomposition, which I talk about in this video right here, I'll link that video below. Or if you'd like to work with me individually with my one-on-one -on -one personalized nutrition and fitness coaching, I'll leave the information for that in the description below as well. Have a great week guys. And I really want to make sure I'm making content that you enjoy and that you need the answers to. So if you have any other video topics you want me to make videos on, feel free to shoot me a DM on Instagram, or of course, leave any ideas in the comments below. I am here for you guys to help answer all of your questions and make your fitness and fat loss journey the simplest it can be with the best results. Have a great week.